Hi everybody. Today we're going to show you how to super clean your stroller to get rid of all that road salt left over from winter and the mud splashes from those spring puddles and get ready for summer and all the outside adventures that lie ahead in what looks to be a second year of pandemic family fun. Over the years in our workshop, we've amassed a big sack full of tricks that will work with any stroller and will help you to both get rid of dirt, rust, mildew, paint scuffs, and so on, as well as help you take preventative measures to better protect and preserve your stroller for the long run. And our example patient today then is going to be this super dirty, moldy, rusty old Baby Jogger City Mini that's been sitting outside all winter. And just to get you stoked right from the get-go about what sort of transformation is possible with your own stroller, here are some before and after pictures where you can see, in particular, how much can be achieved in terms of removing mildew and stains, removing rust, treating scratches, and so on. And while it's not visible just from the pictures, know that by the end of the following steps, this stroller has also been made much more maneuverable and user-friendly in relation to both driving and using the model's many functions. The steps we're going to be taking today then are to remove the textiles, fully clean the textiles, fully clean the chassis, give the chassis a basic tune-up, and put it all back together. So let's get started then. And the first thing you want to do is find a well-ventilated place to work and some old clothes you're not afraid of getting dirty. Okay, so we're going to start with removing the textiles then. And I know that there are a lot of other cleaning guides out there that suggest that you should just hose down your stroller outside, but unless your textiles are riveted to the chassis, I strongly recommend that you actually remove them, for several reasons. Firstly, because otherwise, allowing wet fabrics to dry while attached will rust your stroller's push buttons, zippers, and screws. Secondly, because you can't get your fabrics anywhere near to as clean as you can if you remove the textiles. Thirdly, because not removing the textiles also makes it much harder to thoroughly rinse away cleaning agents, which can be dangerous for your baby. And lastly, because you want to get it your stroller under the fabrics, both to clean it better, as well as to examine the chassis and textiles separately for any problems you might want to address, which is what you should be doing now as you take the textiles off, keeping an eye out for anything loose that you may want to tighten or fix, as well as any rips in the textiles that you may want to mend. And it's also good to make a note of scuffs and rust to keep in mind for later when you're cleaning the chassis. If your textiles use push buttons and they're rusted or corroded, then a tip is to use a butter knife or something similar to remove them. Just slip the thin part of the blade in where the button separates and carefully lever the button apart to prevent breaking or deforming the components. And note that if you do damage the buttons, don't worry, push buttons have a standardized size, kits can be found at most hobby stores, and we have another video linked in the description that'll show you what to do. If you're rather dealing with zippers and they're old and corroded and hard to pull open, then another tip is to use a little WD-40 spray oil or silicone spray to get them open again. Just apply a little to the zipper head and along the track, trying to get as little on the surrounding textiles as possible, even though we're going to wash them. And if your zippers are a bit tight and corroded like this, then after the washing process, another tip is to rub the zippers with the edge of a candle or a little silicone sprayed first on a rag to make them easier to use in the future. Now. With your textiles removed, we can then move on and start washing them. And the first thing you want to do is remove the backboard, the baseboard, the canopy ribs, and any other hard parts like this that are obviously removable. You don't have to worry about pliable ribs, but if there are other larger non-removable elements, then you'll want to evaluate the state of your textiles as well as considering the size of your machine when deciding whether you ought rather to wash them by hand. As if your textiles are thin or relatively worn, boards and struts will push against the fabric in the machine, especially at the corners, and cause damage. Another thing you should think about when deciding between using machine or hand washing is Velcro. Newer strollers tend to use this newer sort of Velcro, which isn't a problem, but the rough side on traditional Velcro can often get stuck to softer materials and do damage. And one last thing before getting to the proper washing is that you want to give your textiles a good shake or a once over with a vacuum cleaner to get rid of looser stuff like hair, small pebbles and twigs and leaves and so on. And in the same vein, if you have any really gunky gross stuff stuck for example down in the seat corners, then you'll want to go around with a brush or sponge ahead of time. Okay. Now we can move on to the actual washing process, and in our experience, the vast majority of stroller fabrics will easily tolerate a colder, gentler wash without any sort of problems. Remember that these are load-bearing textiles, not clothes, so they're made to be sturdy. But if you're super sketched out by this, then washing by hand works as well. And again, the main considerations here should be the things I already mentioned, non-removable elements, Velcro, and how worn the textiles are to begin with. If you're going to use a machine though, then select the coldest cycle, 30 or 40 degrees, and just use whatever detergent you would normally use for clothes. Now, with our fabrics, as you can see, we have a good deal of mildew on our textiles, and this means that we're going to need to use a bit of chlorine to get rid of it, because after testing a wide range of solutions for removing mildew in the past, what we found is that, while the mold itself is not too hard to kill with other products, actually removing the spots really requires chlorine, and the truth is that most, but not all textiles, can actually tolerate chlorine without discoloring, as long as you follow the right process, that is. And if you have mildew issues like us, then you should watch our videos specifically dealing with removing it first to be sure 
sure you do it right. And links to this have been added in the description as well. Now I know that a lot of people are scared that traces of chlorine will be left on the textiles and will be bad for your baby, but the key here is just to wa properly wash and rinse the textiles after the chlorine treatment. And note that the chlorine will be watered down significantly for use, that chlorine has been used for centuries as a cleaning product, and that in the end, if you do this correctly, your baby would be actually be far more exposed to chlorine from a trip to the pool than from properly treated and rinsed fabrics. Okay, if you're going to use a machine, just be sure that you hang up the textiles to dry afterwards instead of using a dryer. And if they were particularly dirty, check them when dry to see if they need another round. If on the other hand, you're washing by hand, then you'll want to use a large basin or bathtub, you'll need rubber gloves and a good washing brush, and just grab whatever detergent and cleaning products you want to use, and be sure to rinse thoroughly when you're done, especially again if you're following our other video on how to remove mildew by hand. Okay, so the textiles are clean, but we're not finished yet because now we're gonna move on to cleaning up the chassis. And the first thing to do here is to give it a good wash. If you have the ability to do this outside with a hose, then that's great. But otherwise, buckets of water work just fine as well. And then you also get the advantage of warm water. Just use a bit of dish soap and get a decent sponge or rag, and you'll also need some sort of a brush to get at the harder to reach spaces, especially down around the wheel mountings. If your stroller is particularly dirty with a lot of grit and stuff, then you're gonna to want to go a little carefully at first, washing away sand or small pebbles that could scratch your stroller while you're rubbing. And then you can go in for a second round with a clean rag to hit up the more oily and sticky stuff. And when it comes to any recessed areas, in particular again the wheel mountings, then you'll want to use that brush. And if you live somewhere that it snows, be sure to wash extra good to remove any road salt so it doesn't lead to rust. We're going to talk lubrication in the last step of this video, but as a quick note here, these wheel mountings are a great place for silicon spray to add a protective coating to the peripheral areas. And once you've gone about as far as you can go with soapy water, let your chassis dry, and then start aiming to deal with any more specific problem areas. If it's paint scuffs that didn't come off with your initial scrub, then you may need to attack them in a more focused manner, using the rougher side of a dish sponge or even a microfiber sponge, but just be careful to localize your efforts as much as possible in order to limit potential damage to the underlying paint. As far as rust is concerned, how you deal with it will depend a bit on the location of the rust and how bad it's gotten. If we're talking about patch rust on a chrome chassis, or really any rust that's on the surface, meaning that you can see that there's metal underneath, such as on screws and rivet heads for example, then a balled up piece of tin foil is going to be your best friend. Though note here as well that you want to do this in a focused manner, so as not to scratch any surrounding plastic or powder coated metal. If we're talking about rust inside scratches, as well as dealing with deeper rust, then you're going to need some chemical assistance, preferably in the form of an acidic paste like Rust Eater, which you can pick up at automotive stores. Though be sure to watch our videos dealing specifically with rust to avoid doing damage to your chassis. How far you want to go with cleaning up more difficult areas of rust or scratches or discolored plastic is up to you. But if you really want to go nuts here, then there are a lot of cool products to be found at automotive shops that can help with faded plastic and scratch paint and the like. All right, so we've finally gotten both the textiles and the chassis clean, but don't put it all back together again yet, because while you have the textiles off, there are a few basic bits of maintenance that you should get done, including some lubrication, which is better to do away from your freshly washed textiles. Before that though, the first thing to do is to go over the chassis with a screwdriver to look for any screws that have loosened and can be tightened easily. Secondly, if you have air-filled tires, then this is a good time to pump your wheels. Just be sure to take them off while you're doing it so that the positioning of the tire around the rim doesn't get lopsided due to gravity. And then after this, move on to lubrication. And in the workshop, I actually use three different lubricants. Silicon spray for mechanisms composed of predominantly plastic, WD-40 or a generic multi-spray for metal and for hard to reach mechanisms, and lastly, a thicker lubricant for heavy duty connection points, in particular for the front forks as they fit into the swivel housings. Note that in general though, if you don't want to buy three different lubricants, then WD-40 or a multi-spray is the most important for general maintenance. Now, from past experience when suggesting WD-40, I happen to know that a bunch of people are going to jump out of the cracks and tell me that WD-40 is not a lubricant, that it attracts dirt and water, and a bunch of other myths. And this time I'm ready for you. So before you start plugging in your comments, please follow the link I've left in the description to dispel any mistaken notions you may have about WD-40, as this product is excellent for stroller maintenance, consisting of half solvent for breaking up rust and grit, and half lubricants. And for strollers, what I found super useful over thousands of repairs and without any problems as a result is the ability to spray it up in a crack between two parts and know that the stuff is slippery enough to run all the way down inside to hit mechanisms that I'd otherwise need to disassemble. Silicon spray by comparison is very nice if you've disassembled and pre-cleaned and de-rusted a mechanism, but the ones I've tried at least won't run down inside your bars this way, as the spray is rather too quick to solidify and form that protective coating. 
Note that when you're using WD-40 then, or a generic multi-spray, be sure to hit up your stroller from different sides and give a couple minutes between areas to let the spray work its way in properly. And then, once you've hit up all your moving parts and mechanisms, let the stroller sit for 20 minutes or so for any residual lubricant to run out of the cracks before giving it another quick wipe down. Using a bit of soap, of course, especially anywhere your child is likely to touch. And then you're finally ready to put all the textiles back on, and you're good to go. In any case, we hope you found this video useful, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you would like to support us or need a bit of advice on repairing anything in particular, then we have a Patreon page where you can get in touch with us. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.